Hello, let's learn about excise taxes. So an excise tax just means per unit. So here in the state of Arizona, there's an 18 cent uh, tax per gallon on uh, the fuel that comes out of our pumps. And so I was having trouble finding a picture of it, but next time you're filling up your car anywhere in Arizona, take a look, there's a sticker on the gas pump that'll give you the federal excise tax um, and then also the state of Arizona tax. And if, lo if the local city is charging an excise tax, you'll see that too. So uh, there you go, example of a per unit tax. So here I've got a market for widgets. I've got a supply of widgets and I've got a demand curve for the widgets. Uh, under normal circumstances, I would have a uh, consumer, so the equilibrium price is, is 250. So my consumer surplus is gonna be this area here from the price up to the demand curve and then that was kind of neat I don't know how that happened and then the this is the consumer surplus and then the producer surplus is going to start where the supply curve starts it's going to go up to here and so this area that I'm sh trying to sh shade here this is the producer surplus okay so you just calculate those triangles one half base time height, not too hard well I wonder if I can get rid of yeah there we go discard okay come back to the current slide okay so let's say the consumption of these products is slightly toxic and the state of Arizona estimates that there's a dollar fifty externality on these products so they're gonna put a per unit tax on these widgets so what do we do here uh, we just go to the equilibrium price and we're gonna go up by a dollar fifty so there's fifty cents uh, there is a dollar and there is a dollar fifty Okay, and then over here, there's 50 cents, dollar fifty. From here, dollar fifty cents, up to here, up to here. would be at a dollar, and then fifty cents right about, right about there. Okay, so I'm going to have this new supply curve, and this new supply curve is S plus the tax. Okay, or or we know what that tax is, it's a dollar fifty. Okay, so uh, we're going to be out of equilibrium, and so now we'll be at. Uh, well, I should have drawn mine just a little bit better here. Should be a little bit more over here, okay. uh, because it's going to go up fifty cents to there. No, well, and we'll be right about here now. Okay, and so. After this per unit tax, the new equilibrium price will be 350. Okay, and we'll be closer to 325. This area here is now lost. Okay, uh, and so that's going to be their dead weight loss. We can calculate that. Um, but this is the effect of the tax on this widget market. Okay, now we want to know who is burdened more. Well, all you do is you uh, add up, or you can you can usually look at it and see who's who has the bigger portion of the deadweight loss? Is it the, the consumers on the demand side or is it the sellers on the supply side? In this case, uh, they're equal. And the reason they're equal is that they both have the same elasticity in, um, in this market, right? So it's gonna be equal uh, in this case, um, but that's, that's the general rule. We're just gonna look at whose um, who's deadweight loss is larger, okay? So that we've shown deadweight loss it has all to do with the elasticities. Okay, so I hope that you have watched uh, the commercials uh, that I've put on there, and um, let's do a market that uh, that we care about here for a lot of people. A uh, real world example like this can be cigarettes. Okay, so the Flintstones are advertising cigarettes back in the old days. Ah, the good old days. Here, uh, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarettes. So the theory is, um, let's stick it to. Uh, the tobacco companies, tobacco companies are, um, have used, you know, advertising that, that has hurt uh, folks in the past and they got them addicted. You know, my grandfather, he started smoking when he was like 13 and he and ultimately killed him. So, um, so this is what they're trying to do. So here we've got this market here. Now we need to think about the elasticities of the two products, right? So cigarettes, I don't buy cigarettes personally. Um, but if I did, I'd probably be hooked, and I'd probably be hooked on a certain number of packs per day. And for a lot of people, that's, uh, you know, one and a half, or, or we'll just call it uh, one pack, right? So here's the demand. The demand is pretty inelastic for that reason. Um, and then on the supply side, 
uh, what's going on, on the supply side well uh, cigarettes are a really easy product to produce right to produce millions of them using machine uh, you grow tobacco grows really well in the, in the uh, tobacco road part of the country um, so it has a relatively elastic supply curve so we end up with this price per cigarettes you know or whatever that is um, you we'll think of it as P uh, P1 or you know something like that okay so the state, state of Arizona comes in and they want to stick it to the uh, tobacco producers and they're going to charge this higher price so we'll call this P uh, plus the tax so now it's going to be this new supply curve that they're charging so this is S plus the tax okay now we can see we have a dead weight loss here and I can actually see who the dead weight loss is harder on right it's much harder on the consumers because they're gonna lose uh, this yellow area right in here and the producers are gonna lose this pink area of the dead weight loss so the intention was to hurt the uh, producers because the producers uh, the cigarette companies have been uh, getting people addicted for a number of years due to uh, these these advertisement type things but but ultimately it's the consumer that pays uh, for this per unit tax so when we're designing tax policy and voting on stuff and thinking about how taxes are going to affect our firms especially per unit tax like an excise tax we need to really remember that okay um, so we can actually we can actually see what the, the cigarette tax is here in Arizona it's two dollars per uh, uh, per pack right and so if you want to smoke uh, you might want to go to a low tax state there's been a um, sort of the alternative here is uh, a lately sort of uh, criminal behavior has been to buy cigarettes in the low tax states drive them up here to the high tax states sell them use that money on the black market for other criminal enterprises and uh, and keep the difference so you know in our country we end up with interesting things as we do this experiment with democracy uh, so there you go so the rule generally is whoever has the steeper elasticity is going to be burdened more okay so just draw them so in case you're asked to do something uh, draw what the elasticities um, look like and you'll get to the right answer okay uh, similar thing happens with alcohol right? more inelastic demand um, this is the wine tax in Arizona it's per gallon 84 cents so there isn't one in Wyoming or Utah the places where the state just sells it right it's just built into the price of the um, or the bottle of wine um, you know interesting things so this is the beer tax in Arizona in case you don't know 16 cents per gallon that's another excise tax okay this is a federal tax burden right beer is really a pretty cheap product to produce right it's yeast and uh, barley and sugar and you got your you got your product there it's a very old product but much of that is is based on the tax per unit taxes so we can also calculate the elasticity for dema um, of, of demand for alcohol. This is an international uh, study based on the different types of um, uh, alcohol and what their elasticities are. So the, um, the whiskey drinkers and the vodka drinkers tend to have even more inelastic demand. Everything below one is, is inelastic, but there's more extreme, right? So I, I want to be in these markets although it's hard to increase you know the quantity demanded it's you know, so there um, the dark beer has a more elastic uh, demand curve and the high strength pre-mixed stuff uh, more more elastic right? let's do another example um, so there are folks in every society who dislike the wealthy and so they want to tax the rich and so they might come up with a product that only high net worth individuals might purchase high net worth individuals it's not not enough to say I'm a millionaire anymore you now it's I got to be you know mega millionaires sometimes a hundred million dollars two hundred million dollars per household whatever there's a lot of them here in the US and uh, so a product that maybe they only buy gonna be something like a luxury yacht right this is not purchased by 
uh, your typical uh, consumer in the United States. There's a very small amount of, of um, folks that are willing to buy these. By the way, if you are one of those folks, uh, there's a sort of an eBay of yachts. Uh, so if you get there, uh, remember me too, and you can invite me to your parties and whatnot. Um, so luxury yachts, let's see. Um, I wonder if it's going to let me draw on this. Oh, it is. Cool. Um, so let's think about this. So, so it has the word luxury in it. And we've learned before that luxuries tend to have a more elastic demand curve. And um, when that happens, you know, rich people aren't stupid. They wait to get a better deal. So we're going to end up with a, a more relatively elastic demand curve. Okay. Now, what about the supply elasticity? Okay, so um, is that an easy product to make? You know, they're they're big, they're complicated, take a while to produce, take a lot of people to produce. You can't produce them in you know in Arizona. I suppose you could, but even more expensive. So you really end up with a pretty uh, inelastic supply curve. So let's uh, let's say that the equilibrium price just under the way I've drawn this just under whatever unit of four is, you know, this can be four million dollars or four hundred thousand um, dollars. Doesn't matter, some kind of price level. And they're going to put a per unit tax on this. Uh, and what they're trying to do is tax the, the ultra wealthy. Okay, so this per unit tax will, we'll say it goes up to, to here. So this is P plus tax. Okay, I think I lost my spot there. So we'll draw a similarly inelastic supply curve here. And the price isn't going to go up too much, but we do want to look and see who bears the bigger deadweight loss. So this little, this little triangle here that I've just colored red, that's the loss to the um, consumer surplus because that's the area below the demand curve. And then this area here is the area lost by the seller. Right? So the producer surplus is larger, so the per unit tax on something that only wealthy people buy that has an inelastic supply curve is going to burden the producer of it. And if you think about who works for that firm, it's probably not the ultra high net worth individuals that work for the, the yacht producing firm. So this uh, per unit excise tax isn't really succeeded on what it's trying to do. In fact, it's kind of had the opposite effect similar to the cigarettes. Okay. Last example, uh, Philadelphia recently uh, enacted a soda um, uh, tax, per unit tax, it's per ounce. Uh, they're trying to decrease obesity uh, and stick it to the, um, the sellers, uh, but also make the producers buy less. So we need to really study the elasticity of soda. But uh, on the demand side, um, soda tends to have, I don't really like that curve there, oops. Let's discard that. Um, soda has a pretty uh, elastic demand. There's, there's other products that we could buy uh, similarly. Uh, and then the, the supply of soda is a really cheap product, right? It's a syrup, you get a bag, all that stuff. Um, so we end up with a probably a similar elasticity. And so as this curve, that sort of straight as plus uh, tax we end up back here and we're gonna get pretty similar uh, dead weight loss so this is the the dead weight loss this is the quantity under the tax this is the price under the tax we're gonna end up with this this dead weight loss right here um, which affects both groups equally. Okay, maybe that was the intention. So maybe this one is is succeeding, although it seems to be wildly unpopular in uh, uh, Philadelphia. Last thing I want to show you uh, is just a different combinations of elasticity. So I wonder if I can just get rid of this whole graph like this. It looks like I can, and so we'll use red for for this. So here. This is a, an inelastic demand curve combined with an inelastic supply curve. And if we were, so this is our old equilibrium. And this is our old equilibrium quantity. Let's move that over a little bit. 
there. So a per unit excise tax on this market, we'll make this purple here. It's gonna be right about here. And I've affected both of them pretty equally. Um, so I have this increase in price. So this is gonna be my new price. We're gonna go where they cost. This is um, this is P tax. And I have this loss equally to both. It's not a huge loss though, because I went from Q star over here to Q tax. Okay, so this one is Q tax. And so this loss is, is, is pretty small here uh, because we're not, we're not cutting back on quantity too much. Um, we have this higher price, but it's just not that big a deal uh, if I had uh, that situation. Let's go to another combination. That was if they were both in elastic. And I'll go back to the blue. And so what if they're both relatively elastic? Get a better one here. Right there. Okay, so in this case, I've got a per unit tax of the distance between the purple and the green and the purple and the blue. And so this is quantity at the tax, this is quantity. Uh, before the tax, this is price, and I encourage you to draw these in your notebook, you know, just to get practice on this. Um, it'll help you on the test and all. Um, so here, I've got, this is price with the tax, this is P star, left in the unregulated market, this is Q star, and then this is P tax. So this is a big loss here. Um, we're not that big of a price change, um, but we are going to see this whole loss here is that dead weight loss. Okay, so uh, when they're elastic, we tend to lose a bunch of this quantity. Okay, um, let's look at two more. And we're all set here. So, what about inelastic demand? and elastic, relatively elastic supply. This was the cigarette example. So I've got my P tax here. Okay, so I'm gonna lose not much on the quantity side. So there's my dead weight loss here. It's both of those, it's really tiny uh, there. And to get over to um, P on the tax, I, I have lost uh, this big area. Now, uh, one thing I might ask you is how to calculate the tax. And the way to do that is or the tax revenue. So it's just, let's say that, let's say that this, uh, this is $3 and the tax is a dollar. So it's, um, this is going to be $4. So it's the tax is $1. So this is how to get tax revenue. So it's $1 times the number of units. So let's say this is, uh, I don't know, 1500 and this is 1600 Okay, so um, we've lost 100 units. That's going to be part of the deadweight loss calculation. Here it's going to be 1,500 um, units. And so the government's going to collect this $1 on 1,500 units. And so the, the total tax revenue will be $1,500. And if that tax was, uh, say, $3, and this was actually 6 and then it would be the distance between here to here, so it's three dollars each times fifteen hundred. It's going to be forty-five hundred. Okay, so uh, this loss here is going to burden the, the producers a lot more. Um, and then we'll do that last one is the yacht one. Okay, so in the yacht one, we've got a pretty elastic demand curve, we've got relatively inelastic supply curve, this is our uh, equilibrium, we'll throw a tax on there, Let's say it's a big tax per unit, and then this is going to be the new price, okay, and then we'll 
get out to this loss here. So we're going to go up here to here. Just get rid of that mess there. Okay, so what we've got here, this is P star, P unregulated. Uh, nope, this is P star. This is, let's just erase that. This is Q star. Okay, so this is the quantity unregulated. Um, now we've got this, this tax coming in. This is S plus the tax, whatever that is. This is P tax. So we've lost uh, this big amount of quantity. This is quantity tax. Okay, so I didn't lose, it's a slightly higher price, but I'm going to lose it on all of this. And so if you look at the dead weight loss here, um, wow, I'm really losing. I'm going to fudge it just a little bit there. I'm really losing a lot, right? And so this is the dead weight loss to the uh, producer surplus. This is the dead weight loss to the consumer surplus. So these per unit taxes can sometimes have really large effects um, on a market and a market's efficiency.